Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hinlin here at the Bricks and Minifigs store in Gresham, Oregon. I'm joined by Mark, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the awesome stuff that they have in this store here. Starting off with a couple of cool, rare, older sets here. So the first is this fantastic older castle set. And of course, you've got the raised base plate, the wizard. What else is in here? Oh, I mean, it's got all, everything included. It's the Fire Breathing Fortress from 1993. It's got all the wizards. It's got everything included. Um, we chose not to certify this one um, just because it would take a lot of time, but it's all complete and looks really cool. Slightly more recent is a uh, rather bizarre set, but has very cool play features. So if you slide this across the counter, you can see how the, the propeller and the wings move up and down. This is the Time Twister series from the, the very late 90s. Yeah, super fun, pretty weird little category. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's really cool. And then, of course, you've got tons more fantastic sets here. Uh, these are all kind of the, the used uh, open examples that you do have some. Are some of these sealed back here as well? Yeah, most of the ones on the top row are sealed. Um, if not, they are certified. Um, I think all of them are either certified or sealed up. Uh, the original Star Wars, we've got a bunch from the 80s, from the 90s. Then we have ones down there that are from the 60s and 70s too. And what does the certified mean for people who maybe haven't been in a Bricks Minifix store before or yeah. can explain that process? Certified basically means that we go through each and every piece and each and every instruction, all the stickers, everything to make sure it's 100% complete as if it was brand new. Awesome. I'm loving the Rock Raider stuff up here. Yeah. yeah, stuff you don't see like in the boxes very often. Yeah, That's these really are cool. really fun. Really good <laughs> condition. This guy, I bought them from is has been a collector and got in uh, eBay really early. Nice. Yeah. Got the iconic like chrome drill piece on that yeah, set. Yeah, <laughs> this one is super fun. Oh yeah. Very cool. Always love the sets with the, the flip up lids. Mm -hmm. What's this like cruise ship looking? I don't know if I've seen that one before. Yeah, so this is the color line system. It's a, I think six wide. Pretty cool. We get a lot of interest in this one. Um, nobody's walked home with it yet, but soon enough, I think. Pretty cool. And I got the Monster Fighters. I mm -hmm. just love that category. It's really fun, too. Is there still a decent amount of interest in that theme? I know it wasn't around that long, but. Absolutely. I think people like the Gothic style stuff. You know, that's kind of fun and, you know, haunted looking. It's pretty cool. And we got Paradisa. <laughs> this one's fun. Such great colors. This one took a trip to Japan and back for no reason. <laughs> that was fun. I, someone bought it off BrickLink, and then they couldn't get it in their mailbox, so it just came back. So. <laughs> and I got this Forceman. This is one of the certified sets we were talking about. So I went through this one myself, and everything is 100%. Um, what else? We got this little uh, semi-truck there. That's pretty great. Yeah. I always got to give a shout out to Western as well. My all time favorite Lego theme down here, the gold mine set. One of the coolest base plates ever. Absolutely. I really love this. And then the whole gold mine playable technique areas that is great as well. I like his brass uh, bugle. He's yes. Got. Oh, and you referenced these sets here earlier. So these are kind of mid 60s. You got a whole bunch of stuff still in the box. Yeah. So these are all seal original Lego pre minifig stuff. So they didn't even have people yet. Pretty unreal that these are still around. They've been in, in the box for 60, 70 years. Was this one one guy's collection? You kind of had all this stuff you'd held on to? Yeah, and a lot of the stuff that we were showing earlier came from the same guy. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Pretty impressive collection. That's super cool when you can find someone that's held on to stuff right? for that long. <laughs> yeah. What else do we got? So got some accessories over here just kind of like you know you've got your your bulk bricks as well the your bulk tables that you can pick from but then this yep. is kind of uh if you're looking for one specific piece yeah this is our premium wall so we have stuff like long chains or cool skateboards i just got a bunch of new colors for those fire you know the um, brackets and stuff that you need um, just a lot of little extra premium things people want and then behind you here is a super cool display case of builds done by a couple of your employees, right? So we'll right. Uh, take a, a quick look at these, but then we'll later on have some of the employees come over and talk to us more in depth about those. But I'm loving all the like DC and Marvel stuff and just, just really neat representations there. Yeah, my worker Nash made most of this and my other worker Cameron made some of the ones on top and they're really impressive. And then over here, you've got a unique kind of custom mm -hmm. uh, photo wall background with all the stands in front of it. So what's, what's the story behind this section? So uh, 
I decided that I wanted to do a selfie wall for my store and just have some kind of iconic thing that drew people in when they walked in the door. So that's why I put the big sign up front. And then I made all these myself. I do woodworking on the side. So um, I took a bunch of MDF, cut it up, and then did two inch dowels and cut those into the studs on top. I actually took a lot longer than I anticipated. <laughs> I thought it would be about a week long process, but it took me about a month because painting out all those circles was really difficult. It's always interesting to see the different stand products. I love this Disney one here, the Disney castle idea for, there's so many Disney minifigs now, so that's a great way to display them. Yeah, that's a new one that Go Figure Displays has done, and I really like it. I like it has only 18 spots for the new collection. And then we've got a variety of stuff over here, so take us through maybe top to bottom what is in this case. Yeah, so uh, Ronald McDonald on there is a, um, he was, for the um, Oregon State Fair in the mid 90s. He was about three feet tall. One of our customers, Terry, brought it in. He did a lot of builds for that back in the day. Um, so he brought it in to display. This is actually from Lego Masters season one. One of the contestants brought this in for us. And this is the C4 um, Lego that was blown up. <laughs> and if you take it out, it actually still smells. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> that and, is super cool. I love that. The <clears throat> damage on the bricks here is crazy. I don't know. If there's yeah, you can kind of get an idea there. That they, is really cool. They said the reason they used C4 and not something else was that it was the only thing that was non-toxic for the contestants and the people in the studio. So I thought that was interesting. And then this panda we got just in a bulk. We were sorting bulk and found him in there. That's pretty rad. So we kept him and embellished him a little bit. And then my worker Nash is really into lighthouses. So he's made a few lighthouse mocks. And my old worker, Tim, he uh, embellished the Tower of Orthanc statue, um, tower, I guess, um, and made it quite a lot taller. And then he made the Mario Kart uh, go-kart down at the bottom. Nice. A great variety of stuff on display there. Yep. And then here you can see tons more sealed sets as well as the uh, original Eiffel Tower set here, right? Yeah, that one came in about a week after the new version came out. And, uh, but this guy built it just from parts, from bulk. Oh, really? Yeah, he said it took him about a year and came in and sold it to me. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. It is a very blocky looking design when you compare it to the new, yeah, the new one for, for sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was really difficult to get up there as well. <laughs> And then we mentioned all the bulk tables here, yep. so how do you organize your bulk here at the store? So we have just a regular bulk in this side. This is just random pieces. Um, and then over here we have our Technic side on this side. And then we have our Bionicle bin, um, which Bionicle kind of comes and goes. We have some pretty hardcore collectors who so will come in and just rifle through it all. And then uh, where they're standing there, we have wheels and tires and color sorted pieces as well. And um, those uh, kind of change up pretty often. Mm -hmm. Always, it's nice to have some of those pieces kind of more easily accessible yeah, for people. Yeah, definitely. And then you've got uh, minifigs maker and in the balls here. So this is kind of the first thing when people come in and they can take a look at all the different minifigs you have to offer, which yep. obviously is a huge part of what the store does. Yep, yep, they're a lot of fun. People get a kick out of the ball figs and I think they're really interesting too. We try and make them funny. <laughs> and then this is our maker table. Um, we decided to put in a friend section because we're getting a lot of requests for like girl hair, girl styles, those kind of things. So um, I've tried really hard at keeping that a good variety there. Good use of your video tiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like that too. And then, of course, uh, all of the minifigs and the display cases over here. We can start with Star Wars down here. Once again, great displays in the background there. It looks like you've got a good variety stocked at this time. And then what are these cases up here? The ones on top are pretty exclusive ones. They're really expensive, hard to find unique ones. So we've got Smooth Hair Leia. We've got the original Django Fett. We've got Jedi Bob. A um, bunch of other ones that are just really hard to find. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And Star Wars stuff, always popular, I'm sure, but it's nice to see so much of it still in stock here. Yeah, we work really hard at keeping a, a good stock of minifigs. It's what people come in looking for, so Nash has been doing a really good job of keeping up with that. And further down, is this more collectible minifigures Yeah, this here? is my CMF case, okay. so this is all the different CMF ones we have. And we have a little bit of every um, series so far. Um, we had quite a bit more of the earlier ones, but they've sold in the last week or two. 
And then you mentioned Bionicle earlier. It looks like you've got some sets in at the moment. Is this most of the Bionicle you've got? Yeah, I do have a sealed um, Rudaka up there as well. That one's pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's most of my Bionicle at the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is more of our license theme, licensed CMF figures. So Disney and Looney Tunes and Simpsons and those kind of things. And over here is our superhero. We originally had it split between DC and Marvel, but people like DC enough to buy, buy them all out, so now we have mostly Marvel. But. And what is this huge book here? Uh, is this like uh, your consult the minifigs? Or what yeah, this is a, just the encyclopedia of minifigs. It goes up to 2015, and it has every minifig made, and it's very helpful. Oh, nice, yeah. 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 I don't think I've ever seen one of those before, but that's a great guide, yeah, for people, especially other bricks and minifig stores and things, yeah, if you're ever trying to look up. Yeah, so Nash used this pretty exclusively for the castle figs when he was rebuilding a bunch of those, and rather than using our phone or an app or something like that, this helped, and it was much faster. So much faster. Yeah. <laughs> but that's only up to 2015, you said? Yeah. Is, is there, has there been other guides since then? Yeah, or? there's a new version and an update to it. Okay. And I just haven't pulled the trigger out yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So this we have Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and then Minecraft. And then these ones are assorted older versions, like Lego Movie and uh, Indiana Jones. And then we have a little dimension section down here mm -hmm. as well. And then always one of my favorite cases is animals, dinosaurs, horses, and then some of the, the older vintage stuff here as well, kind of like yep. we saw at the very beginning with some of those sets. Yep, yep. We've got a lot of great creatures. Those sell pretty well. Um, little kids always love creatures, people in general. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the leaves and plants up here is great. Yeah. The food bin surprisingly gets a lot of interest. These little funny sandwiches we find that people make or whatever, these different foods. Uh, but yeah, we get a lot of people um, buying a bunch of leaves and foliage. And we didn't reference it earlier when we were over here. We can walk back to this set side of the store. You've got your party room. This is kind of set up uh, different than a lot of the stores because it's not a totally separate space here. Yeah. So how does that work in the store, uh, the fact that you don't have it totally closed off? Yeah, originally that was my plan, um, but that didn't work out due to planning and uh, different permits and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I actually kind of like the open design. Um, we feel connected to the party, let people have their space, and I don't have to be in their business when they're having their birthday party. But yeah, we can easily see what's going on as well. Yeah. yeah. How often do you have events happening in here? Oh, almost every day on the weekend every weekend we have one or two birthday parties for sure um, and then during the week we'll have a couple things we do classes as well sometimes so those are fun very cool yeah and we have one of the longest tracks as well this one's about 40 feet long and i actually had to take a section out because uh, we have one more section to put in but... <laughs> <laughs> i like that get that speed going <laughs> yeah intense. yeah that's really fun <laughs> So if people are interested in booking this room, what's the best way to reach out to you guys or how does that work? So if you go on our website, it's bricksandminifigs.com, Gresham slash OR backslash. Um, you can just look on Bricks and Minifigs and find the Gresham location. And then you can click on a button and book our birthday party right on there. Cool. Yep. I know there was one other thing that I wanted to make sure we pointed out as well. So with this register over here, you've obviously got some great builds here, including, uh, is that a Comic-Con exclusive up there? It most it certainly is. It's the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con set, and it's still sealed. One of 1,500. I'll show you the back. It's a pretty impressive set. We've had it for a little while. Um, it came in with the 2018 version as well, which is already sold. But we keep it up here. It's pretty fun. But then even better than that is this Galador poster that we have right here. And then what do you have in front of that? So the Galador poster is in a place of honor, of course. <laughs> um, but my worker, Tim, who no longer works for me, he built me these Simpsons characters in the Lego Land, Miniland style. So they're in that same um, perspective for my birthday because I'm a huge Simpsons fan. And then down below it, I actually am building a Homer statue. So I built this for reference. And then Nash decided to build all these other ones. And it's just kind of fun place to have our, our fun little builds. 
Super cool. So if people want to check out more of what you guys are doing online, what's the best place to follow you guys? Where do you see So we active? do a lot on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. Okay. Yep, yep. We got Gretchen Bricks and Minifigs on all of those different platforms, and you can just type it in and find those there. And are you sharing things like when, when cool new stuff comes in the store and what types of content can people kind of find on yeah, there? Yeah, um, on TikTok, um, we do a lot of like quick builds where people are, uh, or, uh, sorry, um, quick sorts where Nash will sort out minifigs and sort out sets um, and piece those things it's out. It's not you dancing? Well, oh, that too. Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's that. And uh, on Facebook and Instagram, it's more like cool products that we get in okay. and that we post. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So for everyone, if you're if you're in the kind of Portland area in Gresham, definitely make sure to check out the store. Even if you just happen to be passing through on a trip sometime, there's tons of fantastic stuff here. I sp specifically love your collection of kind of the rare vintage stuff. I think it's really, really incredible. So Thank you. if you're looking for anything like that, definitely check them out and mention you sell them on Beyond the Bricks. Say hi to all these fantastic employees as well here because there's some really talented people here. So thank you so much for the tour. Yeah, appreciate it. Now I'm back at the custom build display here with Nash and he's gonna take us through a bunch of these really cool builds. So if you want to just start at the top here and we can make our way through. Yeah, of course. So right over here, this is Hobby or Habanero as you can see by his name tag. Um, this is actually our, our coworker Cameron's cat. Um, I built this for him as kind of just a present because his cat was sick for a little bit, but he's all good now. So. That was a really fun one. I never built an animal statue before, so it was a really like interesting experience for me to kind of just study photos and come up with this, and I think it came out pretty good. Yeah, right. the sculpting is always kind of a very different build approach if you're used to more of like scene type building. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to just experiment with my techniques to build my portfolio and whatnot, so I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Um, over here, uh, this is actually the most recent one I just finished the other day. Um, I'm a big DC Comics fan, have been all my life, so I'm working on a series of just doing mocks focused on the actual comics themselves, um, specifically the first issue appearances. So this is Batman's first comic number, Detective 27. Um, so that one just came out really well. Originally I had a different plan for the color to use kind of that more banana yellow, um, but I had to switch to this one, which I actually think turned out better than uh, how it was. So. Great job with the lettering there. I think it looks great. And even the little 10 cent sign is a fun yeah. vision. <laughs> you know, we have a little label maker and I was like, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna do that. That'll save me some time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the lettering is one of my favorite parts about it. Um, I, I really like trying to figure out how to do weird curvy shapes in a blocky style that actually translates. So, yeah. Um, if we move on here, uh, these uh, mocks were built by Cameron. Um, there is a uh, medieval contest going on that we were actually starting to build mocks for. So this is like a little cart design for like a, a magician who sells magical wares. Um, and then over here is a dice tower because he's a big D&D &D fan. Um, if you pull this lever, it drops them nice. all out. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Tying in nicely with the, the new set coming yeah, out. Yeah, no, we're all <laughs> super excited for it. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna buy it. <laughs> Um, and then this one, uh, we do a big Winter Village display during the holidays, and I asked him to build me a Star Wars one to go in it. So he built this Christmas Ewok Village um, like kind of tree hut for it. So I think it came out super fun. Um, yeah, a lot of little fun references in there. So <laughs> Super cool, yeah. And then right here, actually, um, we do a mock contest throughout the year. Um, we had one that was themed for winter holidays. So uh, this one came out with uh, Valentine's Day. This was for the adults bracket, this one won. And then for the kids bracket, this is a little Home Alone set. Um, I think he did such a good job with that. You can see like all of the good references in there, <laughs> like the Hot Wheels cars, the paint cans. The um, paint cans are fantastic. <laughs> right? You know, the tree with the broken ornaments and stuff through the window. Um, fantastic job. Home Alone's like one of my favorite Christmas movies. So I, I saw that, I was like, he did so well. And I'm, I'm really happy he won for that. <laughs> Very cool. So that's kind of the stuff on the top, and then what do you keep displayed in the bottom yeah. here? Yeah, so um, this kind of case uh, started off um, when one of my other coworkers, he had a huge Lord of the Rings mock, um, but when he left, we needed to fill the space, so I got to work <laughs> on building DC mocks, because uh, that's like my passion. So um, I have kind of similar things to the Detective Comics ones down there with the Action Comics. I built that one first um, as kind of like just the reference of it, and I really like how it came out. Um, but I have all sorts of ones in here. It's like, there's a Green Lantern comic cover, Teen Titans from one of my favorite shows and superhero teams. Um, then there's the Justice League and that team lineup there is inspired by the Justice League show, um, the animated one that they did in the early 2000s. 
and then another little micro scale one next to it um, just to kind of show like the whole picture of it. I love the way that you've built in different scales and also different perspectives here. Like yeah. the Teen Titans with like the tiny buildings and the big lettering, mm -hmm. the micro scale. So yeah, I, I, that's a really cool approach. Yeah, like I said, I'm really trying to experiment with techniques just to kind of figure out different ways to approach a build. Um, it's my favorite part of doing this is just finding new ways to build things. Because I want to be a Lego designer one day, so I need to build a wide range of skills for it. But yeah. Um, I also keep all of my minifigures that are DC Comics related right up front. Um, a lot of them are the official figures that LEGO's made. A lot of them are versions of the official ones that I customize to be more like personal to how I like them. Okay. Um, and then some of them are characters that LEGO hasn't made yet. Um, and I was like just using purest parts to do it. I don't really tend to go for custom printing. I like things to be all genuine LEGO. Um, but yeah, and it's a pretty vast collection. I have at least one of every named DC Comics character that they've made in Lego. That's so, fantastic, very yeah. cool. And um, on the top shelf here, this is my Villain Layer series. Um, it's a little hard to see with the other ones casting shadows on them, but um, Batman has such a wide range of villains and the sets always tend to focus on his vehicles with like the villains just featured. So I wanted to do stuff just focused on the villains just to kind of see like, more of their personalities and stories along with it. Um, and it is arranged in build order. So I started with the Mr. Freeze and then I've worked my way down through like Killer Croc, Scarecrow, Two-Face, who's my favorite Batman villain. <laughs> I'm really happy with like the duality of how that one came mm -hmm. out. Pretty clean, I think. Um, and then there's other fun things in here actually, like I forgot on the Killer Croc one, uh, I threw the Ninja Turtles in there just because they're in the sewers and they've crossed over with DC, so I thought it would be fun to just kind of <laughs> pay a little bit of homage to that, and they fit in the scene really well, so I thought it was just fun. Sure. No, this is fantastic work here, so thank you so much for taking us through a bunch of this stuff, and how, does this stuff switch in and out, or where you switch this up, or people come into the store, was this yeah. what it's gonna look like? Well, I've gotten to the point now where I have too much, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna start switching some things out. Um, like I said, this one is brand new, so I'm gonna have to find space in there, maybe move some of those, like that Batman truck, or that one over there to make space for it, next to my GCPD building, um, just to kind of like make space and whatnot. Um, and uh, as you know, my coworkers, um, they're a little bit newer here and they're getting into mock building more. I'll probably make space for them, like give them the top shelf with mm -hmm. my stuff down below so that we can fill this case out with even more stuff in the store. Very cool. So, and yeah. for people who want to see more of your work online, do you post your stuff yeah, online um, anywhere if I they post want to check my, out? Yeah, um, right there, I've got a little tag for it. Uh, I'm Lighthouse Mocks on Instagram and uh, TikTok as well. So, but I'm trying to, you know, just build up my brand for it. I'll be at Bricks Cascade this weekend with all of this stuff here, so. Um, if people want to come see a closer look at them and they're in Oregon, that's a good spot, a uh, good place to start. So Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking us through all the builds here. And it's so cool to see the, the store have a space dedicated to custom builds like this that people can come in and be inspired by. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, yeah, we have it right here. And then there's other places around the store too. Anywhere that fits, we'll pop them up. <laughs> awesome. Keep up the good work. Thank you.